Hi, my name is uh, Ian Cronish. I'm a associate professor at Columbia University Medical Center. And today I have the great pleasure of introducing Dr. Benga Ogadegbi, who's gonna tell us a little bit about a presentation at the Hypertension 2020 Scientific Sessions. This was part of a, a symposium titled Hypertension Management in the Era of COVID-19 Has the Time for Remote Patient Monitoring of Hypertension Finally Arrived. And Dr. Ogadegbi's topic was titled Implementation Challenges and Opportunities in Low-Income and Minority Patient Populations. Um, Dr. Ogadegbi, we'd love to hear a little bit about what to expect from your presentation. So, well, I'll talk about myself first. I'm Bingo Ogadegbi from, from NYU's Grossman School of Medicine. I'm a professor there in the Department of Population Health. So my presentation actually talks about the importance of really looking at evidence that can allow us to understand really um, the challenges we have in implementing hypertension control post-COVID. So as you know, as I know, uh, COVID made it very difficult for patients to show up in practice. And the past six months, and I'm sure in other parts of the country, particularly in New York City during the, when, when we were the epicenter of the program, of the, of the pandemic, um, the only care we provided in the hospitals was for patients with COVID. So most practices went on to telemedicine. And the, the, the number of practices and patients that were seen via telemedicine just ballooned. Um, in our healthcare setting, it was in, in the tens of thousands, actually. So that poses a challenge. Uh, typically, patients with hypertension will show up in clinic. And the challenge now is that, how do you manage hypertension remotely? And so what, what, what my talk was about was to highlight, highlight what those challenges look like for minority patients, minority populations, low income, and even rural populations. The key challenge, actually, that was highlighted in my talk is one, there's a digital divide. So there's a lot of people talking about the inability of minority populations um, to actually engage in a more effective way with their, with their physicians or, or healthcare provider uh, because they don't have the bandwidth or neither could they afford um, to actually have the privacy that's needed um, in their homes, given the fact that most poor patients and low-income minority patients live in multi-generational households where you have, you have the grandparents, you have other family members, and it's difficult to find that privacy. In other low-income and rural settings, actually, the challenge there is that the broadband is not there um, um, to be able to have the kind of video conferencing that you'd require for an effective tele telemedicine um, appointment. Um, because that's been found to be more effective than just telephonic appointment. And then the third challenge then that, we, that, that, that was highlighted in my talk is that when you think about it, we have solid evidence for the use of home blood pressure monitoring. That's really the key uh, that's, that's like the backbone of how we can manage patients with hypertension remotely. Um, evidence is solid in that. What is yet not clear is home blood pressure telemonitoring because with home BP monitoring, somebody has to download the data and somebody has to have that access. Most, in most practices, small independent practices, not academic centers, patients have to bring in um, their, their, their readings to their docs. So what I shared in my talk is, I, I talk about um, a trial that we completed late last year that actually tried to address that problem in black and Latinx patients from low income practices in New York City. In that study, we looked at the use of telehealth whereby the patients will upload their data onto a web portal, and then a nurse case manager or a doctor, we have access to that. And then 
they engage the patients in their care. So if self-monitoring is avoided, they don't have to do anything else. They get a call from the nurse case manager. When you compare that to just home BP monitoring, also telehealth, but without nurse case management, we found a significant reduction in blood pressure um, in the group that got the telehealth plus nurse case management. Why is this important? Well, it's important for several reasons. One is that the study was conducted in really 70% of those patients um, has a household income of less than $20,000. Um, about 48% of those patients have significant comorbidity, like diabetes. And all these patients are patients who've had stroke, um, and they've had at least um, a month uh, post-stroke up to a year, no more than a year. So we're talking about stroke survivors in low-income practices, and they all receive care in seven hospitals. We have NYU, we have Columbia University Medical Center, and we have six other public health hospitals in New York City that, that tend to care for indigent New Yorkers. So for the first time, we're beginning to prove now that the evidence um, for the effectiveness of these home BP telemonitoring programs is actually solid. So, so that's what my talk um, was all about. And, and, and then finally, uh, I touched upon other policy issues that may make this difficult to scale up. And that had to do with reimbursement for this kind of care. But, but my other colleagues presented data showing that the policy is actually taking hold, um, although it's not clear what's going to happen post-COVID. Um, the government pays right now for telemedicine. But post-COVID, we don't know. And will there be post-COVID? Those are the challenges that, um, that we're going to have to keep talking about. Otherwise, majority of our patients um, may, may have problems achieving control. Um, thank you for, for sharing the, those exciting data or, or uh, overshadowing the data, pre-shadowing. Um, for, for clinicians or, you know, that are involved in advocacy or, th or thinking about the their design of their own practice, do you have any advice for them if they you know, wanted to learn about the type of program that you studied and really implemented across really um, diverse parts of the healthcare system? But if they themselves wanted to learn how to do that, do you have any advice on, on where they may turn? Yeah. Um, so the, 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 a couple of things. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of physicians who run or nurse, nurse, nurse practitioners who run small private practices may want to really think about their practice setup. The real backbone of the program that I just talked about was having trained nurses who actually can lead the counseling. So the idea is how do you redesign your practice in such a way that you can have your medical assistant, because these are very basic counseling strategies, and a nurse. Um, that can actually follow up with the patients. The blood pressure data itself is automatically uploaded, so patients don't have to come in. So there are several um, products that are out there. And so I think small independent practices with two or three physicians or nurse case pressure, nurse, no, nurse pressure, we want to think about restructuring their practice in such a way that you don't have to have your patients come in all the time. And you want to have somebody who is bilingual, if he's your new Latinx patients. If you're dealing in rural settings, you want to make sure that the patients have enough time and enough bandwidth to upload their data. And, and then what you then do is, once you have that package, all you have to then do is check in every three months to be sure that there are no things that you need to deal with. But the key issue that we found in the study was that a lot of the issues that the patients had were about medication adherence, which you, you talk about all the time. And, and those things, you don't need a doctor um, to address those. Um, and medical assistants can address those too as well. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think your talk illustrates uh, so nicely how, you know, we've learned so much more that to have, do our patients right to do the best um, care really needs, the, you know, all medical professionals to work as a team. And um, yeah, so I look, um, thank you for, for sharing uh, your thoughts with us. And I hope all the listeners today will, will, will 
check out the, the full session on hypertension, um, the AHA website. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you again. You too.